should women have this phase before marriage? So we have an interesting conversation mm -hmm. that we want to bring to you all from an Instagram account or podcast called Good Moms, Bad Choice. And this was a clip that was circulating on social media that I thought would be good for us to react to, give our thoughts to. I think it's a little bit wild. I'm not going to lie. I think it's crazy. I think it's ridiculous. <laughs> I'm just going to be honest up front. I think it's ridiculous. I think it's very unhealthy. I'm just shocked with this mentality. And I don't want to be judgmental, but I'm just being honest. I don't think this is helpful at all. But we're going to get into it. But before we do, like this video and subscribe to the channel and check this out. 99.9% .9 of people should explore their whole face. My aunt told me that's me. Not gonna marry that guy. And my baby daddy, we should go be a hoe. She's like, you have to go to black school because you're around two white people and you have to go hoe it up. And that's what I did. And I'm happy I got permission. I mean, I would probably done it either way, but there's healing in the hoeing. We talk about that in the book. We even had our shit said, heal first, hoe later. I didn't have an adult hoe face. I had a child so young and then I got married. College was my hoe face. Freshman to junior year. Those three years were strong. And then you planned a baby. I'm retiring. It wasn't long enough for my face. Some <laughs> just never get the whole face at all. Or they do. Act like a hoe for your husband. Maybe go to the club and like someone like fill on your booty. And like, <laughs> this is the remedy. These are your options. Maybe make out. I don't know. <laughs> don't tell your husband because that's what real hoe does. Don't have sex though. It's not going to be worth it. Yeah. <laughs> so there's that. Mm -hmm. Now, when I first came across this, I was, I'm not surprised. I mean, we got to be real. People, it's a free country. Mm -hmm. You can do what you want to do to an extent, you know, as long as you don't break the law, I guess. Um, People are going to do what people are going to do, uh, especially if they're not Christian. We're a Christian channel, so we, we don't shy away from that. We hold ourselves to the standard of the Bible. Mm -hmm. We have a biblical view of sex, of marriage, all those different things. And we're going to continue to push that. And so obviously we're going to disagree with this. But what I don't like about this is even if you take it outside of the realm of faith, of Christianity, religion and things like that, a lot of what they're saying, I feel like is so unhelpful. But before I give my thoughts on it, I want to know, what do you think about that as a woman? I want to get your perspective before I get in trouble. Y'all, they said there is healing in the hoeing. What? <laughs> Crazy. What? <laughs> like, that is so backwards, okay? First of all, I say we weren't a Christian channel, right? From a worldly point of view, just secular, whatever. Being with multiple people just because knowing that they are not at all what you need for your future. Knowing that they are not going to be beneficial to you, knowing that they're mm -hmm. no good, they're trash, they're not going to be a good leader for you or a good husband. But still sleep with them anyways. It is helpful for you in healing. Y'all, that's so backwards. <laughs> it's very backwards. That is so bad. And I'm like, okay... We know people will sit up here and go through uh, different types of trauma. People need, you know, therapists, things like that. We have experiences. Mm -hmm. People are out here, you know, getting um, abused sexually. All these things, right? But it's because you need that. Every person needs to go through that. I'm like, yeah, don't be fooled. No, it's crazy. Don't be fooled. Yeah, that that's my thought too. Don't be fooled by like this type of stuff. Yeah. Because we look at some of the logical conclusions of, you know, thotting it up, of hoeing, all those different things. The logical conclusion is you're going to have a child outside of marriage, which let's say that they don't, them marriage or not doesn't make a difference for them. Let's say that that's the case. Um, have a child outside of it with a person that you probably didn't intend on having kids with. So now you're a parent because a lot of people disconnect. We know this from the conversation of terminating pregnancies. Y'all know what I mean by that. We know that just from the conversation of that, Having sex with a person is viewed differently than what can lead up to it. As a result, they disconnect sex from the potential of having a child. And so there, therefore, you can just get with whoever you want, whatever your whoever your partner is, yeah. and do whatever you want. So they disconnect those different things. And then when a situation comes up and there's a baby, now all of a sudden you have to make the decision, do I keep the baby or do I terminate the baby and things like that. And now it becomes a crazier situation. So Already off the rip, we have the idea of now you're going to be a parent by somebody that you didn't intend on marrying, that you don't even see yourself with in that way. Or you have to also to, to have to make the tough choice, which regardless of where you stand on the pro-life, pro-choice, we're pro-life, but wherever you stand on it, now you have to do what pro-choice people admittingly say is a horrific decision, which is having to terminate the child and things like that. They even acknowledge many of them 
that it's a horrible dilemma to be in, even though it's not really a dilemma. You shouldn't make the choice, but whatever. So you have those things. And that's not even to mention STIs and things like that. And also the trauma that you're actually doing when, if let's say you want to settle down and get married. Because a lot of what they were saying, as far as I can see from the clip and contextualize was before having a phase before settling down or getting married. So it does seem like there is a view of marriage that, yeah, I would want to find the one and then stop this. So I have to go through a phase. Phase implies that it's temporary. So this isn't supposed to be like my destination. I'm going to be a hoe for life. I'm going to be a thought for life or anything like that. It's saying, hey, go through this. What are the real benefits of being a hoe for a certain period, whether it's during college, whether it's in your early t your teens and things like that. What are I don't see the benefits other than this false bill of goods that we get from this idea of sexual libera liberation it's for a women. Phrase that I heard when I was younger. People would say, "You don't have to touch like the stove or the fire to know that you're going to get burned. To know that it's hot, right? No, for sure. Okay, so going through this phase." What you're going to know that, oh, I like these positions best, whatever. It don't matter who the guy is. Oh, he's a dog. He's trash, right? It's going to feel good for a moment. We know that. Hopefully, if, if you feel like you want to waste the time. And then afterwards, you might feel like, you know, shame and things like that. Have some drama, whatever. Regret. Be embarrassed that he's there and you don't even want to claim him. That you actually slept with him because, you know, he was nobody yeah. to be proud of. Again, you knew that from the beginning, though. And so, and then it's just the cycle, like, oh, but yeah. he was different because he felt like this. And yeah, this whole do we I really need all that experience? This whole idea of sexual liberation being something that all women need to, or is beneficial for them to experience, thereby giving you the whole phase. Because all whole phase implies is, hey, I'll have sex like a lot of men can just have where it's no guilt or any extra stuff. I'm here to say men should feel bad too if What's they're doing that? this. Yeah, we don't men, recommend it for them either. Whether it's a whole phase or a lifestyle of doing it, it's wrong. It's wrong. It's not helpful and it's bad. And it's, what's the funny thing not is- healthy. I encourage all of you that are watching to do some research on, or especially for the women who may be tempted by these different ideas that are out there, especially women in the church. There's many women in the church that also you know, have subscribed to this or was like, well- you know, I'll go ahead and do this because everybody else is, you know, me being a virgin isn't great. Everybody else having sex, so I might as well join them. I encourage you all to look at the studies that they've done on the the type, the pleasure that women get with like this type of, you know, promiscuity and things like that. A lot of times when you look at the studies compared to like a married couple, the women aren't even really getting the type of pleasure. Like they're not getting orgasms. They're not getting the full on sexual experience from this whole phase that they would otherwise get in a committed relationship, specifically speaking, marriage, where you, you get to develop together. and grow with a person. A lot of this is totally one sided toward the men. The men are getting what they want. It doesn't take much in a lot of cases for guys, and it doesn't take long for a lot of guys to get reach whatever climax they're going for. Women, it takes a lot more work and intentionality. But if you're in this whole phase, you're basically just giving your body to be used by men. I'm just keeping it real. If that's se sexual liberation for you, uh, I'm not buying it because by the numbers, women aren't the most pleased sexually outside of marriage. And it's been shown, there is data out there that shows that, that the best, the, the most sexually happy and satisfied women are actually married, which who would have thought? Who would have thought that, right? So I think you have to be careful with this type of stuff. This stuff makes for funny entertainment. Some people are really entertained and love the laughs and giggles you get from this. And it's, it sounds funny to say these different things, but there's consequences to it. I mean, even the name of the podcast, I don't know much about this podcast, so I don't want to dunk on it. I don't want to dunk on these women, but I'm discussing, I'm not discussing them as people. I'm discussing their ideas that they're pushing. And this is something they put out. And the podcast, Good Moms, Bad Choices, Bad choices. kind of seems like they're owning their choices and trying to reframe them into, you know, how they have healed as a result of, you know, bad choices, kind of using bad choices as like a reclaiming, just like reclaiming the concept of whole phase being good, mm -hmm. taking that and reclaiming. That's what a lot of feminists do, just like the idea of slut shaming, taking or being even some women even wanting to be called that just because they're trying to claim it and make it in an image they want it to be in. When in reality, we all know what, we know the real. We know the real deal yeah. when it comes to these things. It's emotional things that happen. It's 
the, you know, what you go through after the fact, you yeah. know what I'm saying? What if you end up liking that person a lie and you didn't even realize or try to, but then mm-hmm. it was just a little thing for them, you know, mm-hmm. all these Not different sure. things that happen. STIs, we ain't just talking about babies. Well, that's a big deal. And, you know, I didn't realize how common they are, like, on campuses and everything. Yeah, People just more. be walking around up Much here, more common than people realize. Going through it, visiting the nurse all the time. Like, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's, we it's need pretty to be nasty. Careful. Don't you don't have to go through that. Trust me. You don't. No, I'm with you, you on it. <laughs> yeah, so be careful out here in these streets, women and men. You don't have to go through a phase of just sleeping with whoever. You don't need a, to raise up a body count. Body count definitely doesn't benefit women. Shouldn't benefit men, especially Christian men. That does not matter. Let's erase that. And let's try to do better. Let's strive for better. Even if you're not a Christian and you're enjoying this content and the conversations we're having, understand that even if you look at the metrics that are outside of the church and religion and what we will push from the scriptures, we know that the Bible talks about sexual immorality, but look at the studies done on people, their sexual pleasure of married people. Look at that. Look that up. And I guarantee you, you'll be shocked to find that. And you'll also be shocked to find how happy a lot happier people are that were married and are married. So those are our thoughts on this. We hope this is useful stuff that you can take and be inspired by Mm -hmm. to keep, if you haven't obviously given up yourself, if you're still a virgin, to wait it out. That's going to be a benefit to you in finding the right one and finding the pleasure that you truly want to experience one day with the right person. But leave a comment. Let us know your thoughts. Feel free to disagree. Uh, Feel free to give your thoughts on this. We're okay. We We can take it. Um, But before you head out, like this video and subscribe to the channel for more content like that. And hit that notification bell. Yes.